All right, so this is a suggestion via Patreon. Uh, the name of the video is why so many countries use bidets, but the U.S. does not. Let's go and check it out. <laughs> Guys, uh, these titles are getting weirder. Bro. It's an age old fact. The United States just loves going to the bathroom. But unlike most other countries, the U.S. is flushing away about 270,000 trees a year, along with their toilet water. 270,000? doesn't have to be this way. The U.S. has the option to follow in the footsteps of Europe, Asia, and its cousin downstairs, South America, by adopting the bidet. But the U.S. chooses to ignore this technology and at times even protest the use of bidets. What's the bidet? Bro, who would protest that? Deal. Today, we're going to come clean about all the reasons the United States has refused to embrace the bidet. Okay, but before we dive in, make sure you subscribe to the Weird History Channel and let us know about... Guys, like living in Europe for like the last oh gosh, eight years, nine years, something in there. Um, I can definitely tell you that everywhere, everywhere you go has a bidet unless it's like a public restaurant or something like that. If you go to someone's house, they absolutely have bidets. Um, Everywhere you, the hotels are going to have them. Uh, it's just overall common practice. Uh, honestly, everywhere it feels like, except for here, for real. About what other household items you would like to hear about. For now, let's rinse off some facts. Oh, well, I can, okay. Listen, we're not here to <laughs> yuck anyone's yum. We're here to state the facts. And the fact is, before the mid-20th century, many Americans had never come face-to-face -face with a bidet, right. which is not hygienic and not recommended. However, during World War II, many American troops became very... Guys, matter of fact, hold on. I'm just going to give you guys an example, all right? Uh, let's, let's go test this. Immediately. I think this is probably mandatory that we at least, at the very least, go see how this works. Let's go check it out. Paper. Paper. Water. Yeah, so... As you see, it's extremely important, all right? It's extremely important. Let's continue. Very familiar with the revolution that is the bidet. The only problem was that the places where you could find bidets were places often associated with illicit activity. Mm -hmm. Now, we're not talking about Olive Garden, we're talking about what? brothels. Seems if you knew about right. bidets, one could assume you were brothel hopping your way across Europe. Most so likely. they just didn't talk about it. And yeah, th those also did not have any type of plumbing, really. Uh, they were using more like, like wash basins. Cause... For to admit that you had gazed upon the bidet was to admit you visited the bordellos while serving. Better to just claim you've never even met the bidet. Another reason the bidet had a bad rap stateside was due to its use as a contraceptive. In the contraceptive. pioneer days of the bidet, many believed it could prevent pregnancy. <laughs> Obviously, that didn't work out too well. Right. The presence of a bidet suggested that the owner of such a device must really love getting it on. Even though no evidence has ever been found that douching nor bidets are good ways to prevent pregnancy, the damage was done and the blemish remained for many years after. As an early proponent of birth control, Norman Hare stated in 1936 that the presence of a bidet is regarded almost as a symbol of sin. Yeah, sinfully spotless downstairs. Uh, right. Maybe. Apologies, guys. The French hold the distinction of inventing the bidet somewhere in the 1600s. Before that, bedrooms were only equipped with a chamber, chamber pot for doing your business. Once the bidet hit the shelves, French excretion enthusiasts yeah, needed a- Yeah, guys, they look like that right here. Uh, they would basically just pour water into it. Uh, they would sit over it and basically wash themselves with... Yeah, guys. And then if you notice, there's a, like a little hole in the back here. Uh, that's where they would basically just drain the water. Um, but yeah, that's probably... that, Guys, That's you're, you're creating like bodily fluid soup by, do, by doing that in that type of device. Only to shift over slightly to clean themselves up. Back then, there was no spray of water. It was more of a bowl in a wooden frame kind of deal. Yeah. But it got the job done. The Nasty. word bidet comes from yeah. the French word for small horse, due small to the horse. appearance of riding a horse when using one. Eventually, the term riding the bidet began to catch on in English-speaking countries as they compared <laughs> using the bidet to riding a little French pony. 
Though, don't try to rear up on the hind legs. Right. You gotta trust us on this one. Ew. Ew, bro. Listen, that visual was unnecessary. If you owned a bidet in the 18th century, you were viewed as kind of a snob. In the early days of the bidet, French royals swiftly adopted the cleansing basin. Even Marie Antoinette reportedly had one in her jail cell while awaiting execution. This caused the bidet to be viewed as a luxury item associated with the aristocracy, and you did not want to be compared to those people. For this reason, the British outright refused to adopt the bidet. For them, the association of the device with French aristocrats and hedonism was enough for England to say, No, no thanks, way. bruv. Right. Turns out, the British no had thanks, a pretty bruv. strong influence on the subject, since America developed the same attitude towards the bidet. So much so that... Bro, like, the UK, at times, it just feels like a... Like a really, like, I don't know, like a short extension of us. At times, guys, at times. At a Manhattan hotel tried to install a bidet in 1900, but was met with protests in the streets. Okay. The bidet can keep your downstairs clean in a few ways, and one of them is helping with women's menstruation, which in the day was a little taboo. Back in the 18th century, women managed the. But why was it so taboo? If, I mean, it's it's natural. Their monthly cycle in private with towels called jelly rags to keep them clean. Yeah, that's where they, that's where they got the term uh, on the rag. That phrase came from the concept of uh, of the. The jelly rags. An 18th century physician named William Buchan even quoted that the British were often inattentive to menstruation, and they suffer accordingly. So when it was I invented, the bidet had great utility to help women freshen up a bit better. But since the bidet was often primarily associated with women cleaning their unmentionables, and the subject of menstruation right. was not a polite topic, right. men were less likely to install one in their own homes. Guys, I already showed you a, a pretty disgusting visual, like visual, guys, all right? You really should be using one of these things. Early bidets weren't much more than a bowl on a table, let alone anything resembling modern day toilets. But as indoor plumbing evolved, so did the bidet. Gone were the days of a wash basin sitting in the middle of a bedroom where any unfortunate sleepwalker could knock it over. Instead of the bedroom, bidets moved into the bathroom where the pumpable water could be found. For the first time, you could use a faucet to fill the bowl rather than doing it by hand. Once something only elites like Marie Antoinette could afford, plumbed bidets eventually became cost efficient enough that any old Joe could own one, provided that Joe lived anywhere but the U.S. Absolutely. Cornflakes weren't the only bowl adjacent invention. Yeah, but he didn't call it a uh, Kellogg's, right? Referring to Kellogg. Um, Kellogg did not actually like create a bidet. He, well, I mean, he called it something super weird, guys. Um, I'm not going to say it because it's going to get flagged. Invention from John Harvey <laughs> Kellogg. But, the inventor and physician actually patented yeah. an American version of the bidet in 1928. The patent application outlined how the device would work. Water is delivered to the affected area and is not likely to be thrown or discharged from the bowl. Which sounds like his way of saying it probably works. The simple right. and economical Maybe. design ended up being a big, wet failure, never catching on in the States. Possibly due to bad marketing by calling the innovation the anal douche. And you said part thank, of balance thank you for saying it, bro. Not to be outdone <laughs> by John Kellogg's attempts to make your hiney shiny, Arnold Cohen entered himself into the bidet business in 1964. As the founder of the American Bidet Company, Cohen introduced the sitz bath, which placed a spritzer onto the toilet seat itself. I think that one uh, caught on. Uh, maybe not so much in the United States of America, but definitely Japan. Um, basically a toilet with a uh, kind of like a spray nozzle that you would push and it would just come out, um, you know, and just basically spray you. Yeah. Cohen's goal was to wean the nation off the though, shaman here. and clean up the Those planet while cleaning your rear end. America. In an especially Cosmo Kramer move, he even had his license plate read, Mr. Bidet. But despite installing the device in thousands of seats all over New York, the sits bath never took off. Turns out only the Charmin bears have cracked the code of how to successfully market the tushy business. <laughs> If you thought Europe was the only continent to embrace the bidet, Bro, we have exciting news for you. All of the Middle East. Like, I've never been to, like, a, 
like a uh, like a, any type of Muslim oriented country. Very specific, like not even not even like just the Middle East, but like any country that that has like Muslim as their main religion. It's bidets, bro. They have to wash their feet. These days, you could find just about as many bidets in South America and Asia. And not only do they use the bidet, but they also judge you for not using it. 19th century Hindus refused to believe that Europeans would wipe themselves with filthy paper, calling the tales <laughs> filthy vicious paper. libel. Well, yeah. Islamic nations have also vicious moved down libel. to bidet town. The tool of cleanliness jibes fully with Turkey's Directorate of Religious Affairs, which says that water is the preferred method of cleaning yourself. Save the paper for your writings. We're not in Kansas anymore, Toto. In fact, we're in Japan with the toilet manufacturer. And keep in mind, like in uh, a lot of the, the Muslim countries, right, um, it's really important to, like, as when you're eating your food, because generally you're going to eat something with your hands uh, wrapped in some type of bread or something like that, right? And you have to be very cautious with which hand you're using, because one hand pretty much is the hand you use to clean yourself. Manufacturer Toto. They hold the distinction of introducing new milestones in bidet technology by inventing the washlet in 1980. Washlet. The washlet was the bidet's fancy, more impressive brother. It included a control panel to adjust the water pressure, uh, okay, wait. built in deodorizer, that's the one and even in Japan. a seat warmer. Talk about a classy way to conduct business. Yeah, but not like, even the guys, those are in like Japanese restaurants in Japan. Health drying function like and everywhere. the precision jets were enough Hotels. to turn America towards the light. Sales of the device in the US tanked. Right. Maybe it was the built-in prejudice towards the bidet, or Could be. maybe it was the $600 price tag. While the washlet continues <laughs> to find success overseas, <laughs> Americans continue to ignore Toto's ad campaigns that promise clean is happy. Yeah, I think those are like $800 or so in America. Somewhere around that During price. During the middle of now. the 20th century, Americans were traveling all over Europe. More traveling meant more exposure to the bidets in foreign bathrooms. If ever there was a time the bidet would catch on, it was in the 1960s. But one barrier stood in the way, the uh -huh. almighty dollar. If HGTV has taught us anything, it's that bathroom renovations are expensive. Since the US resisted bidets for such a long time, American bathrooms just weren't designed to fit both a toilet and a bidet. In order to make the room, costly renovations would have to be done, sometimes up to thousands of dollars to accommodate all the new pipes involved. One could find a bit of relief with electric toilet top washlets that didn't require the space. But more often than not, those required a close by electrical outlet that typically would not exist. Hey, do you guys remember a few years ago when everybody had to stay home for like a few years? That was wild, wasn't it? You might no. also remember during that time that the grocery store shelves yeah. where toilet paper could usually be found were instead barren and empty <laughs> the lockdown mania caused a toilet paper panic right everyone was buying up all the toilet paper they could not leaving much behind for the rest hey listen everyone that was outside of like like europe specifically spain was lucky spain and italy if you guys were outside of that those two, those two countries while uh, the pandemic well while that thing was going on right uh, then you were absolutely lucky and the reason why I'm saying this is because we were literally under martial law um, so going out to the grocery store would probably been a luxury um, it was one person outside the house at, at a time one person in a car type of thing and you had to basically go through checkpoints uh, it was crazy um, so the ability to go to the store and even pilfer uh, this ridiculous amount of toilet paper, then, you know, listen, you guys were lucky. Uh, absolutely. Uh, America was probably the, the luckiest because they didn't care. Rest of us. <laughs> and according to Wired writer Kate Nibbs, some bidet sellers saw sales skyrocket during this time. Now that the TP situation has all but leveled out, some predict that the bidet will keep going regardless. Kitchen and Bath Design News claims yeah, that the know, toilet guys. is the last aspect of human life to get a real upgrade. Maybe the time for fancy bowel movements is now. <laughs> if toilet paper is killing the trees, but bidets are too darn expensive to justify, mm -hmm. what's a casual pooper to do? Enter the affordable alternative, wet wipes. Once associated only with dirty diapers or barbecue fingers, uh, don't mix those two up. Barbecue wet fingers. wipes have seen a renaissance in the early 2000s. 
Why buy a bidet when a package of these bad boys is a few bucks? Companies began selling wet wipes as an alternative to toilet paper, eventually growing to an over $2 billion industry. But just because something makes money doesn't mean it's a good alternative. Environmental groups say that the wet wipes are no good for the worse. ocean, yeah, and flushing worse. them is causing major problems. Yeah, with your pipes, guys. Your pipes are not meant for that. They, also they do not, like, degrade fast enough, so... That's a bad option. So contribute to the growing issue of fatbergs, which are sewer blockages of wipes, food, and waste that clog up sewer systems. We owe some apologies to the Ninja Turtles. <laughs> it seems that when <laughs> some people want to get an idea implemented in America, they pass a law. Which is another reason the United States doesn't have bidets, and other places do. Over in Europe, some countries require you, by law, to install a bidet in your bathroom. Or else. Even though they originated in France, Italy is the crowned champion of bidet usage. Likely due to a building law in 1975 that mandated every Italian home must have a bidet. Beyond Italy, bidets can be found in 60% of Japanese houses, while Venezuela boasts a 90% bidet rate among its homes. Perhaps America's competitive nature will kick in with this information, and the U.S. will no. finally enter the global bidet race. Bro, we are so stubborn by nature. Okay. Tech titan Google transformed its headquarters in 2008 with a fancy high-tech Japanese Toto toilets that were deemed space toilets by TechCrunch. Always striving to be the innovator, Google wanted its employees to be able to experience the glory that is blasting jets, warm dryers, and something called wand cleaning, which we may or may not be able to go into detail about on this YouTube video. Right. But instead of inspiring everyday wand Americans cleaning. to go out and buy a bidet of their own, most saw the techie toilets as elitist and pretentious. It seems Americans didn't want something that SFist called Ultra modern and terrible. Google's new washroom only served to reinforce the idea that bidets are for the sensitive rear ends of the wealthy, not for the average hardworking tush. So, what do you think? Will you rethink uh... your potty time practices? Let us know in the comments below and check out some of these other. Alright, guys, so here's the thing I will definitely tell you right now um, a bidet is better than any type of toilet paper or any type of wipe any of these things like you can do so much with a bidet right wash your feet i wouldn't say your hands because you know that may be a little weird right um but you can do a whole lot of things with bidets i would suggest using them if it's you know if, if this is something that you've never done try it one time live a little all right but all right, listen let me know in the comments if you guys will ever partake in this and why doesn't america I mean, all the reasons he gave uh, make all the sense in the world. Uh, we like, you know, I don't know, being gritty. Maybe that's maybe that could be it. Uh, we look at elitists like I don't. Wanna, I will never be you. That could be it also, right? Uh, but yeah, let me know your opinion. Uh, you guys all have an absolutely amazing day and enjoy your day thoroughly.